So I want to take a moment to recap foliation because foliated metamorphic rocks is a pretty large group of metamorphic rocks and it's a pretty important process. So foliation deals with stress. So if I have a mineral that say is round like this, but it's going to experience differential stress, what's going to happen to that mineral? Well, it's going to start to flatten out. So what we start to see is that our mineral grains will start to line up, right, and according to stress. So maybe I have minerals that are in all different directions and as pressure pushes on those minerals you see it's going to push on these long axes so what happens is my mineral grains now will start to line up now the important thing here with foliation so if I see a rock that is foliated that tells me that there really wasn't so much heat as, as far as a controlling factor in metamorphism it was lots of pressure. So in foliation we see this in high pressure environments. So again let's let's talk about foliation. So let's start with our lowest grade. So the lowest pressure is going to be slate. So we're going to start with a rock Right, and that rock has random mineral grains, we're going to apply pressure to it. So now we're going to apply pressure to this rock, and what we're going to see is those mineral grains are going to start to line up. You've probably seen slate before. It is a very common roofing material in Louisiana, and you may have noticed that slate looks flat. Well, the reason why it looks flat is when you hit it with a hammer, it's going to break right there along those lines. Now, let's move on to the next pressure. So now let's move on to our second, and our second is going to be low to medium pressure. And at low to medium pressure, we're going to have a texture we're going to call phyllite. So let's say, let's take our slate that we just looked at, and let's apply more pressure to it. Let's bury it a little bit deeper. Now, when we go deeper inside the earth, our pressures don't always stay uniform. So what we're going to see is maybe I'll have strong pressure here, but maybe slightly weak pressure there, and maybe it's strong again over here. So what's going to happen right, with the effect of pressure is we're going to start to get a little bit of a wobble. So what this means is my mineral itself may look a little bit wavy. Okay, So it's going to have a wavy texture. So when I see this wavy texture, I know that it's under a little bit more pressure. Now, another good way to recognize phyllite is it's shiny. Okay. So it's shiny because we're starting to develop micas. Okay. So that's important. Now, let's take our phyllite and expose it to more pressure. If we expose it to more pressure, now we are in the medium to high range. If we keep exposing it to more pressure, we're going to come up with our next, and that is schist. Now, with the schist, we're going to see the same thing. So let's start with our phyllite. Let's say it's kind of wavy like that. And we're going to apply pressure to it, and it's the same thing. Right? It's going to be real strong in one area, real weak in another, strong, weak. So it's going to be a little bit more dramatic than what we saw with the phyllite. And what's going to happen is it's really just going to look more wavy. Right. So we're going to have a lot more of a wave to it. And sometimes you're going to actually get a really tight wave to these rocks. Now another great way to recognize schist is there's a lot of micas. As you saw in the picture in the previous slides, you can clearly see those micas develop. Also, schist has garnets. So your things like rubies, right, they're going to develop in schists. Now, if I take this schist and expose it to even more pressure, we're going to come to our highest metamorphic grade. So this is the highest. And that metamorphic grade is going to be our nice. 
Now, with a nice, what happens here, so we'll start with our schist. Now, what's happening here is we're exposing so much pressure to this rock, and now we're probably buried so deep that there is heat involved that my rocks are going to start separating out. So what we're going to see is we're going to have a dark band and a light band, and a dark band and a light band. So what we're really seeing here is our mafic minerals are separating away from our felsic. So we're getting that zebra type texture. So all the dark bands are going to be mafic and all of our light bands are going to be felsic. Okay, so it's really easy to recognize the gneisses because they have that zebra type pattern. Now, if I actually continue to heat up that gneiss, so let's say here I have that gneiss and we're going to apply even more pressure and temperature to it, we're actually going to cross now into an igneous rock. Part igneous, part metamorphic. Okay, so part of our rock is actually going to melt. And we call this a migmatite. So what happens here is, and hopefully you remember from looking at Bowen's reaction series, our felsic rocks have a much lower melting point than our mafic. So what's going to happen is our felsic will start to melt. However, our mafic will not. So what we will see is these nice mafic bands are going to be nice and straight, right, nice and sturdy, but the felsic is going to look all wobbly in there. You can tell that it's melted. So what you'll see is this is really, like I said, half igneous, that would be the felsic part, and half metamorphic, that is the mafic part. So hopefully this kind of clears up a little bit about foliation and how each foliation pattern forms.